Chapter 3 A Plan for Action Thirty minutes later, the conscious sensei gathered in the living room with Mama Chan, Luna, and Artemis. Makoto was still in her bedroom in a Jedi healing trance and was being attended by Ami, while Yusagi sat by the window and stared off into space. Finally, Minako was in the kitchen talking to her communicator. Ray began the meeting. The sensei of fire stood by itself on a lean on using it to support her tired body. Okay, I guess it goes without saying that we just got our butts kicked! She looked around, her tired eyes betraying confusion. Now, how in the hell did Chaos escape its imprisonment and repossess Cellular Galaxia? Susuna's ancient eyes flickered as far as thought as a moment. Galaxia said it was internal. It could never be destroyed. When Yusaki imprisoned it before, she probably didn't have the strength to seal it away for a longer time. Mamoru nodded. From what Yasuko told me, it was a difficult battle. He looked to his wife, but she hadn't moved from the window. Ray's eyes tried to Mamoru's gaze before she stood up and marched over to her best friend. She grabbed Yusagi's arm and finally spun her around. Yusagi, you can't just... Ray's black eyes, sharp with anger before. Suddenly was shocked as she saw Yusagi's tear-stained face. The young woman's lips quivered. I failed everyone, Ray. The Phantom Sisters. And... Allie? It's all my fault. She fell back against the wall as Mamoru ran over to her. He grabbed her by the shoulders and quickly brought her away from the wall. Yusuko, listen to me! He aside. You failed no one. Chaos escaped on its own. Galaxy was corrupted by it. But it wasn't your fault. None of this is your fault. Do you understand me? Yusasaki hesitated for five long seconds before reluctantly nodding. Oh, okay, Galaxy, it is on. You you and me, we're going to have words. Well, you're going to have words. I'm going to have the world. Myra suddenly led his back, back to the sofa. She sat down, but still had a haunted look in her normally shining blue eyes. Masiru placed a bandaged hand on Yusagi's own quivering hand. No one blames you for anything, she stated. We must move past that and formulate some sort of plan to combat this evil. She looked over Haruka, who was sitting on the floor lost in thought. The time boy's woman suddenly snapped her head over to Mishiro and uttered, Huh? What? Mishiro took her hand from Yusaki and held over her mouth to, in a vain attempt to stifle her laughter. Haruka stood up and began pacing. We need more firepower if we're going to defeat these new enemies. We're just not strong enough on our own. Minako finally entered the living room, still chatting away our communicator. No, you can't get involved. This is an internal sensing matter. Yes, if we need help for the JLU... The what? If we need help for the JLU... The what? We'll call the Watchtower. Fanfic, you just got awesome. No, no, Fanfic, you, you can't do this to me. You can't just say that the JLU and the sensing exist in the same universe without telling me why! You can't do that. You can't give me something so awesome as to tell you and the Sensei working together without telling me how that happened. I mean, that is just so freaking awesome. I can't believe it. Uh, I saw it for user. What? You're in luck. Luckily, RK Striker has left a comment on one of your videos telling you exactly how the JLU and the Sensei coexist. I'm listening. Ahem. In the end, when Minako went to England for a little bit at Center V, before going back to Tokyo, in the headcamp for this, while she was over there, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson were there too, investigating some strange occurrences there. They inevitably meet up, have a brief misunderstanding, but quickly team up to fight the Dark Agency. And Batman very quickly finds out who she is. Well, he is Batman after all. Oh, he could probably bypass the magic that protects the, uh, that, that protects the uh, sen Sensei. True, not to mention, he's the world's greatest detective. I wouldn't be surprised. Blonde Japanese schoolgirl in England. Not hard to track, Minako. Okay, you got me. At the end, he and Dick revealed themselves to her as a sign of respect and a welcome to the family. She also stops off in Gotham for a month and meets with Barbara and possibly Cassie Kane. Ooh, I like that! You know, Barb... Or... I mean, depending if uh, we heard Barbara, Barbara and Cassie Kane working together, that would be so cool. 
Hey, maybe Minako could try to start getting Cassie to talk. <laughs> so Minako is officially a member of the Bat family in the TLU. Sometime between the end of Stars and beginning of this fic, Batman goes to Tokyo to, well, according to him, he doesn't know, maybe track Vandal Savas or Ghoul. That's all Ghoul. He would be the most likely to try to use Yusaki's Quinn Suiso to, you know, decimate the planet. Not to mention, considering all the stuff that's in Japan and all the magic and monsters that happen, Ghoul might actually be into that. He contacts Minako for help as he arranges a meeting between him and the Senti. The Senti are apprehensive, you know, it's Batman. Hey, I'd be running on the other way too. But, Minako... Hey, Bats, did that girl get that birthday present I sent her last month? It wasn't what this Nightwing I'm hearing about. Yes, she enjoyed it, and Nightwing is complicated. I'll tell you later. Could you please tell your team to stand down? My backup doesn't need to get itchy. Backup? I can't sense anyone else. Wait, your team? How the hell are we Minako's team? And how are you so friendly with this guy? I... Uh, I... I... Excuse me. Where are you going? I got... Me and Lappy have got a day with Google Docs at night! Won't stop for anything! You get back here. Alright. Coming in 2016. Night... Dark Night over Tokyo. The Batman and Sailor Moon crossover we've been needing. She calls the element over at Haruka. Haruka, they're not just e evil. They're under control of chaos. So we try and save them. Haruka suddenly turned and fixed her ice blue eyes on the Willy Blonde. And how do you propose we do that? Sarah Galaxia killed almost all of us the last time she was possessed by chaos. This time! She let her words trail off and let the silence do the talking for her. Minako gritted her teeth. She walked over to Haruka and jabbed her finger about two centimeters from the nose. We can't just kill them! They're being controlled! Her eyes narrowed. You of all people should know that. Minako, in leader mode. We don't get to see that very often. I mean, she is the head of the Senshi when Yusagi is not around. Heck, Yusagi's the princess, Minako's the leader. That's how it's been in the manga, and that's how it's been in the anime, too. Minako leads. That's who she is. So many fanfics forget that she is a leader. And just like playing up that she's the, oh, she says Yusagi with longer hair. They forget that she can kick butt herself. And they forget to look at her leadership qualities. I approve. Virgo's eyebrows went up in surprise, as well as her temper. She was about to respond when a gentle cough came from her attention. She glanced over and saw Sasuna and Hataru sitting beside Rei. Haruka, control your emotions. Sasuna said, To simply kill Galaxia's Mentians would so definitely send us down to the path of the dark side. Haruka's mouth went dry as he contemplated Sasuna's words. Oh dear god. She turned back to Minako and stepped back, allowing her open to bow. I'm sorry, Minako. You're right. We must try to save. Ami emerged from Makoto's back bedroom and cut her off. No, Haruka. We must do or do not. There is no try. She went over to Sasu and Hataru. I have an idea, but I'm not sure it'll work. Hataru's violet eyes seemed to bore into the genius as he spoke. I have a general idea of what your idea is, Ami. The side escaped her lips before she continued. I'm not sure they go for it. Isaki looked over at you. Wait a minute. All these ideas are always good ones. The bear sent them a smile across their mouth. What is it? Or is it a secret mission that only you can do? All his mouth turned up with a smile. Well, it is a mission, but four others are needed for it. The blue eyes fell on Satsuna, Hataru, who regret and Mishiru. You must go back to the Jedi Academy. Hey, I've been trying to do that too, Ami, but unfortunately I can't find a game disc for that game. What? Jedi Academy is awesome. Sarah's so primary in the room for a full minute before Minako tentatively raised her hand. Um, I think I speak for everyone here when I ask, what the hell are you talking about? So Sue crossed her arms as he figured out Ami's plan. Ami, we don't know what's been going on over there. I said simply have us arrive five minutes after we left. She so raised her left arm and also to the air sensi. We also cannot ask them to fight our battles for us. This reality is our domain and... Willis spoke up. 
The black cat had remained silent throughout the meeting. So you can and listen no longer. Sasuna, you underestimate them! Does you remember their conviction when they fought to save Kettle Ka from the dark side? Or when they went on that quest for the crystal shards? They will help us! Yusaki thought for a moment. Oh! Are you talking about those aliens we met a year ago and you five went out to their school to study for two years? I mean, I. Yes. The Sarah Sensei in that world have gone quite powerful. And it definitely aid us in our fight against Galaxia. We only need to go and ask them. Mishira's head caught to the side as she held her chin in conviction as he looked up at Ami. Of course, that is assuming they're still on Yavon 4. Y'all did graduate to Jedi Knight the day you left, as a soon as achieved the rank of Jedi Master. Ray suddenly stood straight behind the sofa, as a vision passed before the shrine made his eyes. She saw her friends fighting Galaxy of Slaves by themselves, and dying most grisly. Ami Sasuno Hataru Horugai Mishiru instantly sensed Ray's vision and gathered around her, leaving the others confused. What did you see? Ami asked, placing a hand on her shoulder and sending smoothing thoughts to her old friend. I had one of those weird, stupid, vile destination visions. <laughs> we'll beat death. And they did! Ray's breath was coming in ragged gas. But he began slowing down. I see... us, she said between breaths. It's horrible. Her eyes suddenly snapped shut. She shook her head violently, sending her long, midnight black hair whipping around. We had to get help. The five Sarah Se Jedi gr shared a glance, then nodded resolutely. Five hands were in the air, followed by the five shouting, Make any crystal power! Make up! Pluto, crystal power! Make up! Uranus, crystal power! Make up! Neptune, crystal power! Make up! Saturn, crystal power! Make up! Five minutes later, the Sensei joined hands and, and they were in a circle. Makoto had regained consciousness and was standing out to the side. Most of her injuries healed. Luna stood in the center of the circle. Are you all ready? She asked. Mercury nodded. Yes, we can sell or teleport directly to Yavon 4. But I don't know how long we'll be gone. Nako waved her off and rolled her eyes. Well, what are you waiting for, then? Get going! She placed her hand on her head and smirked. We'll keep the home fire staffs until you get back. Armas held a paw to his tiny foreheads. That's keep the home fires burning, Monaco. Not doused. The one says he went down to cat. It said so. I thought it was different. Everyone rolled their eyes and groaned before the five sailor Jedi closed their eyes and concentrated. A suffused glow enveloped them, and a pre-natural wind began blowing around the apart apartment. Sada! Luna shouted. Ami finished. Teleport! A reality away, Luke Skywalker's calm thoughts reached to gaze out at his latest cast of Jedi trainees. About 40 sentient beings were seated in the Great Temple's Grand Audience Chamber, all eager to learn how to be Jedi Knights. Well, the Force can have a strong influence on the weak-minded. My former master, Obi-Wan Kenobi, used a Jedi technique known as Persuade Mind on a squad of stormtroopers while we were on Tatooine. It can also work on people of greater wills, but it's... He suddenly stopped talking and looked to his right. A blindingly white Aresi spear had suddenly appeared. His mind raced as he felt five... No, six very familiar presences materialized. The spear faded, leaving behind five women in center Fukus and one small black cat. Luna looked around, then fixed her eyes on Luke. Luke Skywalker! She shouted, bounding up to the Jedi Master. Luke's face broke into an uncharacteristically boyish grin as he knelt down and skipped her up. Luna, what are you doing here? He asked. He turned to his students and felt some nervousness coming from some. But curiosity was the main emotion coming to them. These are the Sager Sensei for the Milky Way Galaxy. He stated mostly to them. They trained here and became Jedi Knights. He looked back at the Sensei and sensed urgency and fear. What is it? Sarah Mercury stepped forward and bowed. Master Skywalker, we formally requested an audience with you as soon as possible. Luke pursed his lips slightly and nodded, I see. He turned to Sailor Pluto. Remember where my office is. This guardian of time nodded, then led everyone off the stage and into the class of trainees. Luke's head craned around so she could serve Luke. Except for a few more wrinkles around his eye and corners of his mouth, he looked exactly the same. It's only been a year, Luna, he said. 
I feel like you asked a surprise. <gasps> How did you... Her eyes narrowed as he figured out what he did. Do you have to read my mind like that? Luke shrugged his smirk. Sorry, but you were broadcasting that pretty loudly. What a scout, then let down his arms and head for the turbo list in the back chamber. As soon as the five sensei cat entered the turbo list and left, Luke turned to his whispering students. Were those really Sarah Sensei? Yeah, I recognized the outfit. I saw Dana Solo in that something like that once. You did not! Yeah, I did. You wouldn't have recognized her then. The sensei had this aura that prevented them from being recognized. She told me it was her! Luke gently caught into his hand. <coughs> the sound wasn't loud, but it carried to the farthest corners of the chamber. All the students settled down and looked up at him as he continued his lecture. Now then, the power to affect another's mind is quite serious. It should only be used for the most dire of... In the terminal lift, the five sensei and Luna sifted around. He looks... older. Uranus finally stated. Pluto fixed a hard stare on her. Of course he looked older, Haruka. You left for a while, remember? The sensei of the wind ran her glove fingers through her sharp blonde hair and sighed. Yeah, and now I regret that choice. She looked over at Sailor Saturn, but the diminutive sensei was staring at the turbulent door. Mind was wandering. Etu noted her daze and lightly tapped her shoulder. Ataru, she inquired, are you alright? Saren looked up at Neptune. I was just wondering where our friends are. I sense Mistress Tion and Jade here, but no one else is even in the system. Neptune shrugged. It's been a year since you graduated, she stated. People move on. The lift door was open. Allowing everyone to pile out the four floors on, down from the grand audience chamber. Pluto's emerald eyes scanned each door. If I remember correctly, she says as he walked her on the hallway, Vester Skywalker's office is quite close. She rounded a corner, followed by everyone. They came to a large door and felt two familiar people behind it. Sarah Mercury stepped forward, intentionally extended her right arm. Before she was able to knock, a voice came from the other side. It's open! Sarah Mercury, Mercury glanced at Pluto before grabbing the doorknob and turning it. The oak door swung open with nearly a squeak. Mercury and Pluto's mouths turned up in smiles as he saw two women standing there. The first had long reddish hair that came down just below her shoulders and a form-fitting jumpsuit on. Lightsaber blaster pistol was killed to her belt. She leaned against the edge of a large desk as if she owned the place. She's smart, Jade! Of course she does! The second woman had an even longer pair Silver colored and seemed to shimmer in the sunlight. She wore a simple dress with a lightsaber attached to a strip of cloth. Her eyes were mother of pearl and her ears had a slight point to them. Tion Solsar and Mara J. Skywalker looked up to the sensei's approach. Mara walked up to Sailor Mercury. Huh, it's been a bit. Mercury leaned forward into a bow, but Mara gasped her shoulders and held her up straight. <laughs> you don't bow to me. She looked at Uranus and Netsu and smirked slightly. Well, the delinquents are back. Ready to earn the title, Jedi Knight? Here in a scout to roll, roll her eyes. Ah, uh, no. We have slightly more important business to handle. Tion narrowed her eyes at Uranus's outburst. But troubling feelings from her best friend drew her away. What troubles you, friend? She asked Pluto. Pluto sighed and walked over to a chair. She dropped down into it and let out another sigh. I'm not even sure where to begin. Laura faced over back to the desk and sat on the edge again. The beginning's always good. She muttered, why not start there? Saren cleared her throat began. <clears throat> in our reality, there's also a dark side and a light side. However, our dark side has a consciousness and will of its own. It's called chaos and has possessed Sarah Galaxia, the most powerful sentry in the Milky Way galaxy. She so paused and Neptune continued to tail. What's even worse is that she's gathered an army. She glanced both at Mara and Tion with her sea blue eyes before continuing. In the past, Silver Moon has opted to heal the souls of certain enemies instead of killing them, letting them leave comparatively normal lives. Tion smiled and nodded approval. That's great. Compassion can be one of our greatest strengths. Neptune let a nervous chuckle escape from us, continuing. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, Galaxy had targeted those people and enslaved them to her will. The witch. Mara shifted her gaze to Neptune. And how many of these people did Little Miss Moon spare? Ami's eyes did quick calculations. 
I sense 18 beings there, including Galaxia. And that's the number of former NSDs Yasaki killed over the first five years we were sensi. She turned to the Jedi Master. And there are currently nine Sarah Jensi, all of which exceed Mask, Luna, and Aramis. All eyes look to, uh, to the door as Luke entered the room. The trainees are in cooperative lessons for the day. He said as he walked up to Sailor Pluto. I heard what you said while coming here. I will do everything I can to reunite my galaxy, Senshi. His wise and eyes turned to Mara and Tion. I assume you two are in. Tion's normally serene face had a scowl as he nodded. They aided us when Lumia and Barakas made their move. How can we deny them help? Mara walked over to Tion and placed her right hand on Tion's shoulder. I'm in too. Can't have a Senshi reunion without me. Luke chuckled. All right. He then turned to Sailor Mercury, the corners of his mouth turning up. We can use the calm center in the basement. You do remember how to use the equipment, right? Mara let off a bark of laughter. <laughs> you kidding? She's probably dying to take a look at that advanced technology. The camera slowly deflated the tensing in the room. First Neptune, then Tion and Luke began chatting, chuckling. Even Sarah Pluto, Pluto, the normal two soaks of the group, let smiles stretch across their faces. Finally, Luke and Mercury joined in. Lays of laughter swept the tension of fear away, if only him for a moment. It allowed Sailor Sensi and Jedi a minute of relaxation before settling on the grim task at hand. You know, considering this whole reunion feel to it and this whole entire getting the band back together feel to the story, maybe I should have waited until a year after doing this story just to really give you guys the feeling of seeing everybody again. But then I would miss the due date for Star Wars Episode 7. And I'm nothing if not punctual. Mizuno Ami stood to the, next to the halting communications there and cracked her knuckles in anticipation before sitting down. She pressed the large red button on the main console, bringing the beast to life. Who should we contact first? Luke asked. A small voice from the back spoke up. Anakin! Everyone turned back and saw a rapidly blessing Ataru. She looked down and moved her foot along the ground, whispering, Well, I would like to see him. Ami turned back to Luke and looked up from her seat. Where is he? The Jedi Master thought for a moment. He's on a mission to Osus. There are some artifacts there that Tion wanted to study. He and Tahiri went there. Ami puzzled up the coordinates for Osus, and within minutes, a large image of the New Republic shield flashed on the view screen, followed by a text message. The party you are seeking is unavailable. Please try again. Ami's eyes rolled. <sighs> no matter what universe you're from, voicemail messages are still annoying. Maybe I should try hippies? As soon as the words left her mouth, the screen flickered to two young adults who appeared. A young, blonde-haired woman with shiny green eyes and a young man with sandy blonde hair and intense blue eyes. Her mouth was a gate of surprise, and for the first time, Tyree Felia had nothing to say. Hotaru was speechless as he looked upon Anakin's face. When she had left, he was only starting to mature. Now, his face had lost most of his baby fat, and his eyes now shone with maturity. She almost swooned at the sight, but Tari's voice shattered her reverie. Ani, Sitsuna, Luda, Hotaru, Haruka, Mishiro, it's really you? What are you doing back in our reality? How's Tokyo? How's Yusagi? How are you? Ali blinked twice. Yes, it's really us. We're here on an urgent mission. Tokyo's fine for now. Yusaki's not doing too well, and we're a bit under pressure. Anakin's face hardened at words. Ooh, what's the problem, Ami? The blue haired he genius hesitated. It's rather difficult to explain, she went down and thought before continuing. We do need to see you as soon as possible. Terry nodded, all trace of her fun side passing. Understood. We'll have almost all the artifacts you want, Mrs. Chion. Yellow said I waved her off. Forget the rest. Let's get back here as soon as possible. Agate nodded. We'll leave immediately. His blue eyes then wandered a bit to the back. Oh, hello, Taru. His hand reached to the side, and the image of the two disappeared. Haruka slided up, suddenly blessing Hataru and patted on her shoulder. Hm. So, you got your eye on the young gentleman? Nice cats. You see her also stood by the sense of death and nuts her in the ribs. Our little girl's finally growing up. Hotaru's cheeks red and even more, practically glowing. Mara and Luke simply turned to each other. Crazy kids! 
to both mothers. Ami thought for a second. Okay, that's Anakin and Tyree. We next would try for Tedokan and Jason. Her hands flew over the controls as she looked. Lynn sat at College Center's control board and looked into Ami with skeptical expression. How would you know where to look? Tion opened her mouth to speak, but Ami spoke up first. It's really simple. Delka's sense of duty will send her into the direction of taking on the mantle of Queen Mother of the Heapies Consortium. Jason's sense of duty and his immense love for her will keep him by her side, through thick and thin. Where one is, the other will be far behind. Tion's open expression turned one surprise at Ami's correct deductions. That was quite insightful, Ami. You are also correct. So she turned her head around to look at Luke. Luke, would you know the correct the coordinates for Hapies? The Jedi Master nodded. It reached over and punched the coordinates up for Hapies. The image on the screen changed from the New Republic seal to a beautiful brunette woman. This is Hapies Prime! How may, how may I direct your call? Luke smiled and bowed. Please, connect us to Princess Tenel Ka. My security code is sending a signal. The woman looked down. The back up, her eyes wide. Yes, Master Jedi! Her hands moved off screen, and the image changed to a lavish bedroom. Tenelka and Jason could be seen sitting on a four-post bed, oblivious to the galaxy as they made out. Jason's hands were running through Tenelka's fiery locks, while Tenelka's right hand was fastened firmly into Jason's shirt collar, and a left hand was on his shoulder. Everyone in the concert turned a bright set in red. Now, you see, that type of eleven I can get into. Luke shook his head and sighed. <sighs> she received a prosthetic about two months ago. He said to Ami, said to Hataru. He then looked up and cleared his throat. Ahem! <clears throat> Jason, Tainoka, can we please speak to you for a moment? Uh, Luke, I don't think they're looking at Shaka the prosthetic tan, considering the fact that Ami is probably one of the more preferred of the Senshi. She's probably going, Yes! Take it to the bed! Take it to the bed! Rip off his clothes! Harder! Harder! The two lovebirds turned their eyes to the few screens with lips still locked. Tails caused hands let go of Chase's collar and shoulder, while he tried to untangle his fingers from her hair. They slowly scooted away from another, blushing furiously. Uh, 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 hi, Uncle uh, Luke! <laughs> he said, with a weak grin and a wave. Tails called it out a nervous laugh. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Master Skywalker. She sputtered. Luke pursed his lips and spoke to the two. Hello, Tenoka. Hello, Jason. Give your tongues a workout. Jason let out a nervous laugh. Uh, no, we were just... Tenoka interrupted him. You see, it, it was a simple misunderstanding that... Sister so stepped forward. There's no time for that. How soon can you be back on Yavin 4? The two rose from the bed and walked closer. It'll take over a week, Tenelka thought out loud. Jason nodded. Yeah, there's a ton of red tape, and Granny Todd's shoemates wouldn't be too thrilled about it. His face woke her grin. So, we'll be there sooner than a week. No matter the circumstances. It's great to see you five again. Luna gently coughed it to her paw, letting Jason look down and wave in a rather goofy fashion. Oh, sorry, Luna, didn't see you there. Tenelka's eyes narrowed. I'm getting a really bad feeling from you, said Suna. What's the problem? The Sensi time shook her head. An old enemy of the Sailor Sensi has returned. It has an army. We need your help in vanquishing it. Telka's eyes glanced down for a moment. Once he glanced back up, they were filled with determination. We will help you, and that is a fact. Jason nodded and clenched his fist. Yeah, I'll be there too! Luke gave them a curt nod. Thank you. Hey, Jason, just be glad your father didn't catch you. Luke, considering Han Solo... I'll bet he's like, Kid, hold on to that girl. Don't let go. I approve. Jason's eyes brows shut up in surprise at Luke's statement. But before he could respond, Luke reached over and cl clicked the link. Ollie cleared his throat and looked back from his seat. Well, who should we try and sit next? Haruka spoke up from the back. You have two of the original three Sailor Jedi. Might as well try for Jaina next. The blue-haired genius nodded. Where is she? Luke thought for a second. She entered the New Republic Navy about a month after you left. He leaned over and tapped on his shoulder, quickly establishing a link with Starfire Command. I still have access to the fleet registry and duty assignments. Mara smirked. I guess being a galactic hero does have some perks. 
Lynx rolled his eyes, and the large list of squadrons appeared on the screen. He quickly highlighted one peculiar name. Here it is. So he's serving the headquarters frigate in Rogue Squadron? Ami frowned. That doesn't sound good. I thought Ami was a good pilot. I thought Gina was a good pilot. Tiong looked at her with a quizzical expression on her face. Um, Rogue Squadron is considered to be the best fighter squadron in the galaxy. Why would it be bad that she was assigned to it? And it's one of the best dang Star Wars games ever! I don't even lie to her mistake. While the stare of her cheeks seriously read, Oh, I'm sorry. I assumed that the title Vogue would refer to outcasts and ne'er-do-wells. A squadron of rogues, per se. Haruka rolled her eyes and rubbed her forehead in frustration. She has an IQ of 300. Yet something so simple. She wrote a brusly elbowed Haruka in the ribs. No, no. She can't be right about everything. Atari spoke up. I wonder how Gina's doing flying fires. Mara's eyes became slightly unfocused as she remembered Gina's last hollow. <laughs> she says he was really enjoying it, but she was recently assigned a new weakman named Jang Fell. He's an exchange officer for class, and Gina said that they've had some problems getting along. Screen wipe! Two long x wings glide through space, one piloted by Lieutenant Gina Solo. Oh, Lieutenant, what do you know? And the other by Captain Chang Fell. The young woman checked her bearings and saw the Mon Cruiser, headquarters frigate, dead ahead, with her constant system activated. Return to Solo. Your bearing all is off by point oh 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 one degree. No 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 no. I think I got a bear bear voice for for Chang Fed here. The Ted Solo. Your bearing's up by oh 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 when the geese. Flash century. Look, I don't know the guy, and in the books, he steals Jaina from Zek. I'm a little miffed by that. The grim voice was that of Jag, a state officer from Chis Exploratory Force. I'm sorry, seeing the word chist and all I can think of is Doctor Who. It was quite formal, and when they first met, Tina thought of him as stiff and unimaginative. He flipped a switch on a control panel, and when a spit to Sakaar's castle said, My apologies, Captain Fell. So I'll attempt course corrections or light a full ceremony off target. Jake's face came forward. Deadpan with a sense of humor. <laughs> Please attempt course corrections. You might be selected to by a micron. Tina slits off the comm unit, almost cracking the case in the process as he flew the snub fire right into the cruiser's starboard landing bay. Paul seconds later by Jag's X-Wing. With practice ease, Jana switched off the main engines and activated the repulsor list, slinking into sleek fire into a marked-off area, and setting her down with nary a bump. She then unsealed the cockpit and jumped down to deck. Jana took off her helmet just as Jag walked up. He was a slightly older man, about 23 to Jana's 21, but he carried himself like an old man. This flame big dear. Before Tina could speak, an older man with a cheeky grin walked up to him. Uh, how, so, how did he go? He asked. Both Tina and Jack stepped into attention and saluted, prompting Major Wes Jensen to walk around them. He stuck his nose right in Jack's face and stepped back. Stuck his thumbs in the air and waggled his ears back and forth. Tina let out a giggle, while sending Wes over to her. You're not allowed to laugh. Tina turned us back to attention. Yes, sir! West nodded, a serious expression on his face. It quickly changed to a smart as he turned back to Jag and stuck his tongue out after a young man. I like him! After about five minutes, West lay outside and his soldiers swung to defeat. Okay, this man is dead. He finally turned to the salutes and said, Lieutenant, today's daily report will be done by you. Wes will be there, and you might want to transform into your sailor outfit. Young Jedi's eyebrows shot up in shock as she looked to the deck plating. Her teeth red, so... Uh, what? I really don't think that's a good idea, sir. Wes shrugged. Okay, but the Gerald's a real big fan of the new holodrama Sailor Jedi. Jack green eyes Gerald. Pardon me, sir, but I don't believe Gerald and Dealey's would have proved such a waste of time. Wes eyes strong with mischief. <laughs> that's what he said when I walked on was in the show. Sailor Jedi is now a Holocron series? Oh, 
Sweet Celestia, I gotta watch that. He walked off before stopping. Your report will be an hour in briefing room free. Don't be late. He probably turned around and pointed to Pear. Or, in the name of Wes, I'll punish you. Jack waited until Wes left the hangar bay before letting a breath. His smile turned up with a smile. <laughs> That's so much sure I can help that in, he admitted. It's getting harder each time. Jana shrugged as he walked over to the set of doors near the back. He entered the hangar bay and walked down the hall to a piloted changing area. I don't even know why you try to hide it, Jack. Everyone knows you're not as stiff as you seem to be. Just go with it. Jack turned and pressed a button on the control panel. Perhaps, Gina. Perhaps. See you at the breathing. He said, before disappearing into the room. An hour later, Jana stood in front of the headquarters frigate's entire pilot group. Nearly 150 beings sat on a series of curved benches that lined the central stage. Right behind her was the main hollow projector. Wes Antilles! Wes Jensen and other squadron leaders sat in front. Gina had a dead pad in her left hand was giving her notes. Finally, a chime sounded, prompting everyone to stare down at Jaina. She ran through a series of Jedi calming exercises before speaking. Computer, please begin recording. A triple beat sounded from the speakers, indicating that the meeting was being taped. Gina then walked over to the hollow projector and pressed the button on the console, turning it on before checking her notes and speaking. This is briefing 16814, performed by Gina Solo. Pole arm and Harp Squadron were engaged in combat exercises. She trailed off as she noticed everyone staring at her. Or rather, the hollow projector next to her. Some had expressions of shock, while others were trying hard not to laugh. She turned her head to the right, and her eyes bugged down in shock. Instead of diagrams of the fire squadrons and the patrol routes, the hollow projector was running a continuous loop of Jaina Sailor Corellia. She transformed, far off the Corellia hyperspace vortex. It thrust her hand out towards the camera with her clubbed fingers in a victory salute. I really gotta watch that show. Jaina whipped her head around and did a light scan of the crowd. She instantly felt a strong sense of mischief coming from... No. It couldn't be. It was coming from... Jag fell? Oh, dang. I had my uh, money on Blake for Wing Commander. You know, I bet he and Luke could get along great. They're practically twins. Okay, so only you Wing Commander fans are going to get that gag. She reached out with the force and turned off the hollow projector. But couldn't swing it off. Jag! She said, what did you do? Young man stood up and with an odd glance his eye. Sorry, Tina. Just had the urge to show that I'm alive. So Wes got off his side. Okay, what's going on? Or do I even want to know? Tina pointed out at Jag. He set this up! I don't know how, but he sliced it to the computer and put it in those publicity hollows! Wes turned around and looked up at his nephew. Is this true? Jack, Jack's solar blades locked his vision. Yes, sir! He walked down to the bottom of the rows. But I didn't think it would be a bad thing to do. Master Jensen pulls pranks all the time. Wes thought about for a moment. <laughs> so the kids are live after all. He got it off and turned his head to Jag. So... How do we turn it off to get some real work done? Jack walked over to the hollow projector, and it put a series of commands. After a minute, the image changed from Sailor Corellia to a diagram of ship movements. Sorry about that. He muttered to Jaina. Wes nodded and sat back down, while Jack hurried up the stairs to his seat. Jaina checked her nose and resumed her speech. An hour and a half later, Jane finished the briefing, and as the pilots began filling out, Wes walked up to her. Quite detailed, Lieutenant. An excellent report. Dan's seats ran slightly. Thank you, sir. Both looked up as a voice came from the intercom. Lieutenant Solo, you have an incoming call from Yavin 4. Her eyebrows firm in surprise. Yavin? What would Uncle Luke be calling me for? Red shrug. Call officer. Pipe to transmission into breathing room free. A smile drifted across the lips of his old friend. It's been a long time since I talked to Luke. Too long. The two walked over to the back wall, and a few screen mounted there. Rance pressed a few buttons next to it, and the image on it changed from the symbol of the New Republic to Luke, Luna, and Ami. Jaina's mouth abruptly dropped in open surprise. Ami? Luna? Is that you? The small cat bared her tiny face in a smile. It's good to see you, Jaina. Although, I wish it was under more pleasant circumstances. Luke waved at his old friend. Hey, Wedge. How's Coruscant these days? Wedge chuckled. <laughs> it's the same old grind. We fly around, talk about an hour. Smooth changed a bit. 
Take it just as a social call. I mean, I... That's correct, sir. We need to borrow Tina for a bit. It's an urgent matter back on Earth. The New Republic General thought for a moment. Well, we are at peace for now. He stepped back and strained to attention. Lieutenant Tana Solo, I hereby and officially place you on extended leave under the supervision of Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. Say a nice salute. Thank you, sir. I spoke again. Gina, would you know where Zuck is? Young Jedi turned back to the view screen and swallowed. He's out of contact right now. But I can fire off a message to him. Luke's eyes narrowed. Gina, what are you not telling us? Gina's soldier sagged to bed's side. <sighs> well, after he graduated, he went back to bounty hunting. It's not like before, though! She exclaimed, waving her hands. It's voluntary, and not part of social redemption process! I'm again, Luna exchanged glance. Okay, Luna said. Gina waved her off, forestalling any lethal explanation. Anyway, it's been about two weeks since I talked to him, but I can fire a message to his ship. Little nod, satisfying for now. All right, we'll see you soon. The image of Brunswick fans, allowing Jaina to run out the door and make a beeline for her quarters. She entered and threw a set of clothes onto a satchel, and quickly changed it to her flight suit, while simultaneously turning on the commute. Computer, I'd like to send a message to Zek, I'm in The computer flashed a message and spoke in a male monotone. Please input Holonet address. Jaina hopped over while trying to stick her leg into a flight suit. With one hand, she punched in the address of Zek's comic unit on his ship, while she pulled the flight suit up with the other. The computer beat twice, and Jaina began speaking. Zek, this is Jaina. I know it might be a bit until you get this message, so I'll make it brief. The singer says you have returned to Yawa 4. I just... I just spoke with Luna and Ami, and I'm heading back there now. She looked at the view screen, a miniature camera beneath it. I'd like to see you there. She raised out the force. The force, she clicked it off. She spoke one more time. I love you. Jana clicked it off and finished suiting up. She clicked her lightsaber to a flight suit and slung her shots all over her shoulder and hurried out the door. She double timed to her turbo lift and entered. Starboard Hangar Bay! She shouted. Within a minute, the door slid open, allowing her to exit and head to her X Wing. She spotted Chang, changing laser minutes. Well, thank you, Captain. He looked over at her and nodded. Uncle Wes told me you were leaving, so I thought this would be a good wedding present. Jaina looked over her fire. Thank you. Is everything set? Jack nodded as he finished screwing on the Emir. Yeah, fire is ready. He stepped back. Good luck with going to this Earth. She so extended her hand. It was nice flying with you. Jack looked at her hand, the class and punched it twice. Same here, Jaina. May the stars shine for you brightly. He said before walking off. Jaina saluted him as he left. Then walked up to her fire. And don't put the cargo hats on the bomb. She stowed her sassel there. And then walked over to the access ladder on the side and climbed up to the cockpit. The sass slid up and sealed her in. Flight control! This is Lieutenant Solo! Request permission to disembark! A female voice came over to calm. Permission granted, Lieutenant. May the force be with you. Zia grabbed the flight stick and activated the repulsors, setting the X Wing into a hover above the flight deck. She eased the craft out of its berth and once she entered the main area, kicked the engines on. The snub fire shot into space and banked off, away from the headquarters frigate. She had checked the coordinates for Yavin 4 and pulled down the hyperdrive lever. The stars turned into streaks, just smeared to a reddish mass as her fire entered in hyperspace. Coruscant. You know, guys, if this were a movie, this, there would be a bunch of sea slides, some really good music as we see each one. I think I know the perfect song. Let's fly! Zack checked his blaster's power supply for the fifth time as he waved for his mark. The young man was sitting inside the Outlander's Club, a bar near the Imperial Palace. His target, an Aquilus gunrunner, was due to pick up his payment, and Zack wanted to make sure he never got it. He smiled inwardly. This wasn't like the first time, just after Shadow Academy's destruction. Now he only hunted criminals and scum and was out here because he wanted to, not because he had to. 
Master Skywalker was a little wary at first. But Sick managed to stay on the light side of the Force and clean up the space race a little. The hardest part was telling Gina. So, you're bounty hunting again? She despaired. Sick bit his lips, trying to formulate an answer. Finally, he said, Last time I did this, I was running away from you, from Jason, and from everything. I got this feeling that this is what I should do for now. Gina's face perked up a bit. So, you won't be doing this forever? She asked. Sick turned from her and walked over to her window, leaning on the sill as the breeze ruffled his hair. I won't simply take any case. I'll only take cases from New Republic Security and other law enforcement agencies. He suddenly felt her hand on his shoulder. Then her arms around his waist as she hugged him. I'll miss you. Sarah choked back tears. Hey, like I said, I'm not doing this forever. It'll take more than a few light years to keep us apart. He turned around while still in her grip and snaked his arms around her shoulders. I love you. He whispered into her ear. Jaya pulled back and looked up into his emerald eyes. I know. She says her two mouths closer. Hey, Sack! Pay attention! Stop dreaming about hot chicks and get to work! Sack's wavering was broken as he felt his next target enter the bar. He seriously glanced over at the eight faced alien who made his way over to the another patron on the back. Sack way into the aquahus was right next to him. Dead stood up and stood in front of him. Pado Mitkriya? The Oculus bleated a curse in his native language, then turned and ran for the door. Sek felt his guilt and anger, and knew that he had to be the right one. The still thin Jedi rove his way through the crowd, casting up to Pado rather quickly. Stop right there, Pado! He yelled as he grabbed his shoulder. Pado turned around and quick drew a blaster pistol from his belt. Sek rolled his eyes and held up his right hand. The lightsaber hilt attached to his belt sprang to his hand, and he pulled the trigger on it, activating a reddish orange plasma blade. Sex last first. Boo! 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 That joke was horrible! Get off the stage! That, it's that meeting, you bit! Talos on blinking eyes seemed to grow a little wider as Sex calmly sliced the blister pencils off. Pa oh, packed up another two steps. But Sex waited to figure out an Oculus something recognition. Bounty hunter deactivated his lightsaber. Cut it back to his belt with one hand. While taking out a pair of stun cuffs with the other. Pedal and make you, I place you under arrest on behalf of New Republic Security. He says he quote the Oculus and led him back to his ship, the lightning rod. It took only 20 minutes to get Pato to a police station and to get the 25,000 credit bounty on him. Over that an hour, Sick was back in space and distributing his new sound well from his ship's cockpit. 5,000 will go to the academy, 7,500 will be earmarked for NF. He thought to himself. As the old freighter passed by the defense platforms, Sick knows he had a message from... Jaina! He switched on the comm, and in record time received a message. It was indeed Jaina, half of her flight suit trying to speak. Sick, this is Jaina. I know it might be a, a bit until you get to this message, so I'll make it brief. Sega says he had returned to Yala 4. Just spoke to Luna and Abi. I'm heading there now. I'd like to see you there. She seemed to hesitate before saying... I love you. The screen went blank as the message ended. Sex checked his nav computer and input the coordinates for Yavon 4. He pulled down the hyperdrive lever, an odd grin across his face. This'll be just like old times, he thought to himself. A sharp cry escaped his lips as his senses were assaulted by a vision. He saw Dana, no, still Corellia. The brown haired sensei was firing off Corellia's hyperscape vortexes at something. Assembled a demon from one of the Corellian hells, only more evil. Nothing Corellia did stop it or even slowed it down. The beast finally reached her, raised her clawed hand high into the air. And there was a flash of red. While I, Luke, Tiona, and Luna stayed in the concert, Uruka, Sasuna, Hataru, Mara, and Mishiru eventually left and went up to the Great Temple. <sighs> oh gods, I just realized. I'm oh, God. Over 20-something characters to voice in this. God, I love my job. Ruka looked up and shielded her eyes from the sun. It's not healthy to be cooped up like that all day. 
she said. Mara agreed. I agree. Jedi Knights aren't meant to spend all day inside. Not even scholars. Haruka turned her head frantically around and smirked at the red-headed Jedi Master. Try telling that to Ami. She still finds more enjoyment in reading than most other activities. Atari ran down the steps ahead of everyone else. Her skirt fluttered in the breeze, and she delighted in the warmth of the sun on her pale skin. And he can love me back in two days, she thought to herself. She wondered if he was taller, or how he and Tyree were getting along. She closed her eyes and reached out with a force, trying to reach his mind. I'll doubt you contact him. A voice from behind said. Atari's violet eyes shot open in surprise. She turned and saw Sisuna there. Oh, you scared me, she exclaimed. A faint smile crossed Sisuna's lips. I'm sorry. She walked up next to her Tataru, looked up to the gas giant Yavin 4 already. <laughs> you can't wait to see him, can you? It was a statement, not a question, and Atari knew it. That's right, she whispered. Atari then looked down at the ground. It's been a year since we saw each other. Heck, I'm surprised he remembered me. So Sooner placed a comforting hand on Atari's shoulder, and said soothing thoughts through physical contact. He will always remember you. Anakin is not the type to forget a friend. Ataro smiled bitterly. I would rather be forgotten than simply remembered as a friend. She broke away from Setsuna and walked along the edge of the jungle, leaving behind a very worried Jedi master and friend. While Ataro went off on her own, Ruka Mishiru Mara stood at the entrance of the great temple and talked. Will you finish your training? Mara asked. Ruka let out a slow whistle and ran her fingers through her short blonde hair. I'm not so sure to tell you the truth, she finally said. Monsieur held up her right hand to her chin and nodded. We are already great powerful. Mara's eyes hardened. She held out her right hand and concentrated for a half second. Ornate rod materialized in front of it as she raised it to the sky, <laughs> shouting, Corsa Pella, make up! A green shaft of light enveloped Mara, melting her jumpsuit and reforming it into a center fuku. It was a green bow tied in front, messy skirt and ankle boots. She held her right hand to her forehead and saluted to stun Haruka Mishiru. <laughs> For the love of the Force, I am still Coruscant! She unclipped her lightsaber from her skirt and ignited. Shoo! <laughs> sending forth a bluish white blade. I challenge you to a duel. For a half a second, Haruka and Mishiru stood there with open mouths. Then twin looks of determination crossed their faces. She held the transformation wands aloft and shouted, You and this crystal power! Make up! That's your crystal power. Make up! The two ladies were enveloped in calm light, and when he faded in the second layer, Sarah's Uranus and Neptune stood ready to fight. Sarah Coruscant raised herself and held out a gloved hand, mostly to come forward. Uranus uncooked a lightsaber and space sword from her deep blue skirt and held him in a classic offensive stance. While well, Neptune uncooked her lightsaber handle from her skirt and activated it, sending a deep green blade forth. Uranus advanced on Coruscant, swinging both blades at her. The Jedi Master blocked her attacks, then quickly leaned down and lashed out with a foot. Uranus stepped back a bit, though, avoiding the trip. Sailor Neptune jumped up, up and somersaulted in midair, landing silently behind Coruscant. She swung her blade at the red head. I quickly brought her blade around and parried the navy green blade away and down. At the bottom of the steps, Otaro and Sisu watched the trio. I don't think I'll understand those three, Otaro said, shaking her head. Sisu nodded in silent agreement. Yurina swung her space sword at Coruscant, but the sensei twisted out of the way and jumped up to the right. Coruscant twisted in midair and hit the stone wall with both feet, rebounding off and landing a few steps down. Uranus and Neptune both advanced on her. But Coruscant also stepped down. Maybe started to stay in front and couldn't surround her. Uranus thrust her golden colored lightsaber at Coruscant's midsection while simultaneously swinging her space sword at her head. But the red headed Jedi Master deftly moved her head to the side and parried Uranus's thrust back and towards Neptune's emerald colored lightsaber, throwing the sensei of the sea off balance and causing her to back up a few steps. Uranus gritted her teeth as he tried for Sarah Coruscant's head again. Coruscant suddenly held up her left hand and said, Shield of Hope! A green energy barrier formed around her, deflecting Uranus's attacks. Neptune's sky blue eyes narrowed. So, Shetsy powers are now allowed? She held up her left hand to the sky, a spear of warrior energy formed in a palm. 
DEEP! She yelled. When the spear was large enough, she brought her arm down and released the ball, sending Hurley in towards Sailor Coruscant while shouting, SEMBATS! The Sailor Jedi Master's green eyes tracked the incoming energy attack and rolled out of the way, but eventually curved back to Sailor Coruscant, tracking her. By now, a large crowd of trainees and Jedi Knights had gathered around the entrance to the Great Temple, and at the field just before the steps. Several younger students gathered around Hataru. Uh, you wanted to say the Sensei? A blue tinted twilight female to ask. Ataru nodded as a small smile crossed her face. Yes. The twilight looked over at the duel, which by now was quite fierce. I don't think the one in green will win. Sisters spoke up while serving the bell. No. Sarah Coruscant will win. I have foreseen it. Ataru's head slowly turned to the right, while her eyes narrowed. I thought you weren't allowed to use your powers in such a manner, she teased. A smile drifted across his face. I wasn't. I know Mara's capabilities, as well as Haruka's and Mysterious. They are about mass. Haruka and Mysterious knew that. They didn't show it. Coruscant waited a half second before Neptune's deep submerged reached her. She jumped, allowing the attack to hit the stairs and explode, gassing out a large hole in the stage of stone steps. She angled her body so the shockwave sent her flying, shoulder first into Uranus. The blonde said he was knocked up to the stairs and gasped in pain. Coruscant rolled through the head and swung her lightsaber at Sailor Neptune, who could only block it. Neptune's blue eyes turned frozen as he fought Coruscant. No one hurts Haruka! She muttered as he sung in Coruscant. Coruscant chuckled. <laughs> Anger is of the dark side, Mishiru. She did parry Neptune's attacks and deactivated her lightsaber before stepping past her guard. This isn't also so much anger as you hurt her girlfriend. <sighs> Neptune's face registered shock, then registered pain as Coruscant struck her in the right temple with the hilt of her lightsaber. Her eyes quickly lost force and they crossed themselves before she collapsed onto the stairs. Sarah Coruscant clipped her lightsaber back to her skirt and concentrated for a half second. A bright light enveloped her, and when it faded, she was back to Mara Jane. She turned to the crowd at the bottom of the stairs and, when she saw them clapping, down mouth dramatically. Thank you! Thank you! Then walked over to Hiranus, who was just getting back up. Sensei the wind quickly got to her feet, and a free flash of light referred back to Teno Haruka. I guess we're not strong enough. She admitted, not looking into Mara's eyes. Neptune held a gloved hand to her throbbing forehead, and the props behind while referring back to Kaio Mishiru. Our egos are still large. Mara turned to her and nodded. Yeah, but that misses your next step in training. Suddenly, all eyes looked up, up to the entrance of the Grand Audience Chamber. Luke, Ami, and Tion stood there, with Luna perched on Luke's shoulder, and Ami and Tion flagging him. The Jedi Master crossed his eyes and spoke of a commanding presence. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you two will finish your training. Hisira and Haruka stood up and bowed. We won't fail you, Haruka said, clenching her fists. Luke shook his head aside. I don't care if you fail me. I don't want you to fail yourselves. He glanced at Hataru and Sasuna. Luce's family adopted Sana as their daughter nine months ago, so they'll be here in two days. <laughs> Woo! I'm so happy for you, Sana! Congratulations! And Lobaka was helping them with a media and a trade dispute. Hello, was there too, but that's mainly because I'm getting into Spice and Wolf now. Quartet made their way down the stairs. Well, Sasuna and Hataru broke away from dispersing the crowd and walked up. You did quite well. Haruka simply glared daggers at her, while Monsieur turned to Luke. Master, it'll be about a week before we're all gathered here. Will you start our training now? Luke's eyes stared deeply into Monsieur's, then looked up at the same sun. Your training will commence tomorrow, after you've had a good night's rest. He then stared out the stairs, pressing by everyone. Tion. Please assign them a quarters for the duration of their stay. Tio nodded, sun certainly playing over her face. Yes, and what shall you and Luna be doing? The black cat suddenly left off Luke's shoulders and touched down the bare dirt. I don't know about him, but I'll be with Ami. Everyone watched as Luke, Luke made his way to the edge of the jungle. I'm going to the river to meditate, he said rather mysteriously. Everyone turned to Mara, who could only shrug and roll her eyes. Hey! Sometimes I've got no idea what goes inside Farm Boy's head, either. 
Haruka and Monsieur reacquainted themselves with the Jedi Academy over the next two days, pushing themselves as hard as they could. The duo was outside with Tion, and a group of older stoners in front of a boulder. Haruka, Numa, please step forward, the teacher said. A youngest blue-skinned twilight female and a blonde, tall-haired tomboy broke from the crowd and stood in front of Tion. You two so demonstrate cooperative telekinesis. She turned and motioned to the large gray rock embedded in the ground next to her. Please lift this rock out of the ground. Numa and Haruka exchanged glances, then concentrated on the mass of stone in front of them. They both reached out and telekinetically glanced onto the rock, but they failed to coordinate their pull. Numa tried to wriggle the rock free, while Haruka pulled straight up. As a result, the rock jiggled a bit, but firmly in place. Tion smiled mysteriously. You're both lifting the rock, but you're not cooperating. Why is that? Numa shrugged. I thought this one of us would be enough. Why bother with that? The other Jedi Master closed her eyes and shook. No, Numa. You two must work together. A Jedi is never alone. I must learn to use teamwork as his fullest. She must have back to the war rock. Please work together and lift this rock from the ground. We're going to Numa send a telepathic message. I'll lift and you try to wiggle the bomb part. Does that work for you? Numa smirked as he, her head tail switched. No, I'll wiggle the bottom. Remember what Master Skywalker said about trying. We're going to try and fail to suppress her groan as he reached out with the force again. She plunged the dust of the rock. This thing's only half exposed. There's a lot more below. Numa nodded and concentrated. I'll shake the dead gap around the bottom and pry it loose for you. The ground around the rock slowly began trembling as Numa shifted around the loose dirt and Haruka turned into the stone. As the ground buckled around the rock, he began sliding out of his hole into the air. Numa sent Haruka a non-telepathic message. You got the thing. Beats of sweat were forming on Haruka's forehead. Her short blonde hair was plastic to her forehead. I got it, she said through great teeth. Behind the pair, the other trainees gasped as the massive rock lifted out of the ground. A large grin both rang on Haruka and Numa's faces, while Tion simply nodded and said, That was quite nice, you two. Haruka licked her lips, then slowly brought the rock back down his soul. Nice job, job, Numa. Tion opened her mouth to speak. But the sound of engines drowned out her words. A strong wind picked up and her long silvery hair whipped her around. Reached out with her senses. She felt two freighters and a small fire fire coming through the atmosphere. Class is dismissed. She motioned to her and Monsieur, but the pair could only feel the approach of their old friends. The trio ran to the lightning field. <laughs> it appears we're a little late. Monsieur says they approached the grassy field and saw Luke, Ami, Sasuna, Hataru, Luna, and Mara already there. Sara was hopping from foot to foot as he waited for Anakin, while Mara and Sasuke chatted amiably. Luke turned his head frightenedly to the side. It's starting. Tian looked to Haruka and Mishiru, then back to Luke. Ah, what's starting? She asked, her right eye twitching. Luke moves into the lighting ships. Our journey is starting. The two small ships descended to the ground, but they couldn't have been more different on the outside. The first was the lightning rod. Piloted by Bounty Hunter and Jedi Knight Sek. The whole plane was dented and dirty. The ship itself was twice as old as its pilot was. But underneath the hull lay a state of the art KYD 29,000 engine. Right! Order now! Order now! Hidden and weapons and one of the best pilots in the galaxy. The other ship was the Jade Saber. A modifying luxury yacht with smooth lines and an even more powerful engine. Right behind those two was a small T65J X Wing Fire. The nimble ship slipped in between the two larger ones and landed without even kicking up any dust and the hats open, allowing Jaina to climb out and drop down into the dirt below. <laughs> Again, if this was a movie, as each one of them got out of the pilot seat, I could so totally see their names being la labeled in their sensi or the rank. <laughs> Lightning Rod's main hatch opened and lowered to the ground. Zach walked down the ramp, but when he saw Jaina, he ran over and felt her a hug. <laughs> Thanks. Readily turned to worry as he said Sex worry. What is it? Sex blinked twice as he looked her over. I just had a feeling, he said, that I might not see you again. Gina raised her arms and returned Sex's hug. I'm here now, and I'll never leave. 
Sec nodded. I know. And it feels good. While Zane and Sec reveled in a reunion, the Jay Saber's hats opened up and the main ramp extended out. Anakin and Tyree walked down, followed by Lola, Loi, Sana, and Lusa. We figured that we were on the way, so we picked him up! Tyree exclaimed, thrusting her arm into the air. Mara walked up to her ship and ran a finger against the sleek hull. Huh. <laughs> no scratch on her. I'm proud of you, Anakin, she said, nodding in approval. Young Monk Shred. It was too hard with the. He was cut off when Hataru lost herself at him and grabbed on a rip jarring hug. I missed you! How are you? Hataru exclaimed. Anakin almost lost his balance when she hit him, but he stood firmly as he returned to hug. Oh, fine. He slowly looked over at Tyree, he turned away from the two, and walked over to Tio and Sitsuna. She bowed formally at the two and spoke. I'm glad to see you again. Sitsuna returned to bow. I am also glad. Tyree's head left it, tilted and left it up. I agree nice to look at Sasuna. But you're not glad for the same reasons I'm glad. Sasuna straightened up. I suppose not. She sighed. We need your help. Our galaxy was doomed. Sana walked over to the trio. The young Melody was now 16 and starting to become a woman. Her brown hair was no, no longer curled, but fell straight against her head and just below her shoulders. Yellow eyes stared directly at Sasuna. Oh, I knew I should have turned in my transformation wand. But no, I had to listen to that furball and Luna drone on about love and justice. She crossed her arms and looked back at small cat. Oh, hi Luna. Ladies and gentlemen, Sana will now be played by... Marble Pie. Mm-hmm. With a pair of face and a smile. Hello, Sana. It's nice to see you solid in... Despite before. Kung Ting shrugged. Her pale yellow eyes shone with some more mirth than before. Goth. Haruka and Monsieur stood off from the rest of the group, not knowing exactly how to participate. That changed when they heard a loud looking bellow and saw a massive fur head their way. <laughs> before either could move or say anything, Goy was in front of them and had them wrapped up in a bear hug. <laughs> Master Lobaka says that he's very happy to see us, am I? MTD said, as the little droid translated Lois's roars and ground. Haruka nodded, her face turning purple. That's great, she wheezed. You see her trying to squirm out of Lois's iron grip. Please, I said, please. Lois said to pair back down, let go. <laughs> Growling apologies. Haruka gulped in large quantities of oxygen, then gave Lois a once over. He was starting to fill out a bit. It wasn't as lanky as he once was. A streak of black fur over his left eye was darker, but his brown eyes were still quite intelligent, and he still had still the same old wookie. Monsieur spoke. I still owe you and Sec for watching over me, I call on. Lois shrugged and growled. It was nothing. My honor and loyalty demanded I do it. Monsieur shook her head, sitting here on green bounce out. I don't still care, and I still owe you, <laughs> and I'll pay you back somehow. She so reached out and ran her fingers through the hair on Lois' right arm. Holding her fingers to her chin, she thought, What sort of conditioner do you use? Lois' brown eyes looked at Monsieur, and he yelled to confusion. Look clear his throat, before quickly getting everyone's attention. Jason and Tenel Ka aren't are here to arrive in two more days. However, I believe it is pertinent that we all be brought up to speed on why the Singer Senshi have returned. He most of the great temple. We shall meet in one hour in the grand audience chamber. Everyone nodded and broke up into small groups. Jaina, Sack, and Ollie made their way quickly up the stairs. Ugh, I need a side shower and some food. And Sack will join you. Ow! I deserve that. Jaina groaned, stretching her muscles. Ollie glanced back as they entered the great temple. I'm sorry about having to call you here, Jaina. Your career in the New Republic was apparently growing quite well. The trio boarded the tamar lift, and as the car rose, Jaina scoffed, Puh. I'm a Jedi Knight and Sinner Tensi first army. Besides, you're my friend, and friends don't abandon friends, no matter what. Ami smiled at that. Thanks, Jaina. The tamar lift halted, and the doors opened, letting the three Jedi off at the fourth floor. Ami walked ahead of Jaina and Zek, and mostly to the wooden door near the end of the corridor. 
You've been given guest quarters for the time you're here. This shouldn't be long. The door slid open, revealing a single bed and dresser. Gina turned to Ami and wearily said, Where's the second bed? Seth leaned over and peeked inside the door jam. I think it that! Ami thought about that for a second. There are cheeks slightly Ryan. Oh, oh, uh, I believe Master Skywalker simply wants to, one of you to take the bed and the other to counts. She looked at Dana, then at Zach, then at Dana again, ice narrowing. Unless you two are... Dana ran over to Ami and quickly covered her mouth with her hand. Don't you even think of finishing that sentence! She hissed. Ami struggled to remove Dana's hand while Zach thrust past the two women. Uh, I'll, I'll take the couch. He said, plumping out, stretching in. Mmm, comfy! The blue haired genius finally pried Jane's hand from her mouth. I'll go see Master Skywalker. And with that, she left the room into his two occupants. Second Earl's eyes tried Jane as he walked over. The short young woman sauntered tentatively sat down on the edge of the couch. How's business been? She asked, her hands clenching while resting on her knees. He slowly sat up. I broke up a smuggling ring two weeks ago, and, well, you won't believe it, but... I teamed up with Boba Fett to take down slavers, he chuckled. Tia's brown eyes widened in surprise. Boba Fett? You trained up with that criffin low-life scum? She went away and blinked, feeling most together her eyes. I thought you weren't going to be like him. I thought... She gasped as she suddenly felt sex strong hands on her arms. He pulled her over to him and gazed deeply into her eyes. Boba was after the same thing I was. For some reason, he hates slavers. Our goal simply interjected. Besides which, I let him keep the money. Jane blinked the moisture away from her brown eyes. Then went up breath and realized a little. Good, she finally said. I'm glad to see that you haven't compromised your principles. So you probably brought it from his embrace of stress. Ugh. I really have to take a shower. She so said, walking over to refresh her. Sex smiled. Will you be well right over there? She looked back over him over his shoulder and attempted to declare, but only ended up looking cuter to Zack. He gave her a quick salute and walked over to refresh her. You gotta love her, he thought, because if you don't, she'll beat the tar out of you. Gina's voice suddenly came from the refresher, amplified by the force over the running water. I heard that! You know, I wonder if Gina won't mind if I take a little look. No, <laughs> just no! Don't try to peep it on the girl with the force powers. Doesn't turn out pretty. The three dead eye knights and one cat stood on the rooftop. Tyree's bare feet dangled to her side, while she and Anakin talked to Hataru. After we came back for Daros, Master Skywalker thought that we accidentally started a civil war there, but the government was quite happy and repaired the main dam and saved the value of monuments. Hataru nodded at regular intervals as Tyree continued speaking, only half paying attention. Her violet eyes were instead focused squarely on the man sitting next to Tyree, and right in the middle of the group. After a few minutes, Tyree finally stopped speaking about her and Anakin's adventures, and turned over to Hataru and Luna. Her breath ragged as a bit from speaking non-stop for 15 minutes. Oh god, Tyree, you are picky! So, how's Earth been? Have any exciting stuff happened there? Hataru caught the eyebrow of the young woman. Do you mean... Besides being attacked by Sarah Galaxia and people we thought we saved, she tried. Not much. What's our. I can't suck a bit nervously. <laughs> I think Tyree means before that. Although, if I remember correctly, your identity to Sailor Sensei are still secret, right? Luna, sitting on Taru's lap, craned her neck to look up at her Except for a few people, that's right. She wasn't a Taru with a paw. Taru started in high school and is an excellent student. Otaru blushed slightly as a compliment. Oh, Luna. She sighed while rubbing Luna's head. Anakin looked her over and half smiled. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you're doing well in school. He pointed at Tyrion with a thumb down himself. Most of the people I know never exactly had a normal education. Otaru's cheeks turned beet red at that. She looked away from him and struggled to keep her thoughts to herself. He likes me. He really, really likes me. Tyrion looked over at her friend as unemotions rolled for her. But... She couldn't quite place what they were. Are you all right? Hataru shot to her feet, dumping Luna off her left. I have to go. She said, running off. Anakin's head caught to the side, intent to restore her. 
The meeting starts in five minutes. We better go. Scoot up one of the two's arms before heading down the stairs with Tyrant trailing behind him. Confusion showed in her green eyes over Tyrant's behavior. Wonder what what her problem is. Anakin shrugged and went away outside. Tyrant is falling for him hard, and I don't think this will bode well in the future. Luke's sky blue eyes looked out over the grand audience chamber as everyone assembled. Mara, Sasuna, Luna, and Tion were on the stage with him, while Anakin, Tyri, Hataru, Jaina, Zek, Ami, Mishiro, who were going to lose on Moe, and Sada, <laughs> sat in the five rows! Sasuna walked over to the dais and began speaking. I know that I have to repeat this to Channel Ka and Jason when they arrive, so I'll keep this simple. Her scarlet eyes darted around, and taking everyone in before they continued. In our reality, the dark side is just as persuasive as it is in yours. However, it is also more active in its corruption. It just doesn't whisper in the air. It grabs your soul. It has a name. Chaos. Sarah raised her hand and waggled about, getting everyone's attention. Um, yeah. And how exactly are you supposed to combat that? I mean, fighting bad guys is one thing. I don't think we can raise war against the fast and dark side. Atari returned and looked back at her. Eyes turning into the seconds. Although the dark side can never, it should never truly be destroyed. You hear that, Lucas? Chaos can be sealed away by beings with sufficiently pure heart, such as us. Sasuna nodded. Sailor Moon can seal chaos away. But first, we must fight off the army that has gathered around herself. Mara spoke up at that. Sasuna, is it true that these were all former enemies of yours? The Guardian of Time nodded gravely. That's correct. Sailor Moon had healed their souls and helped them find peace in their lives. None of them were truly evil. Luke's face had turned serious as he began thinking of the next phase of the mission. So I assume we'll be still teleporting now. I stood up for a seat and adjusted her glasses. Actually, I was thinking we should take some of our steps to that old hyperspace anomaly. She saw her glance around and saw everyone looking at her. The blue haired genius bowed her head and meekly said, oh, Of course, saying I teleport might not be so bad. Jedi Master Persis looked and thought, Actually, you're right. It would be better to have a secure base from what to operate from, and I don't know if we'll be able to blend in into Tokyo. <sighs> Lloyd roared and grunted, <coughs> Most of you are fine blending in, but Lucy and I might be better off in the Jade Saber Steel Dragon. Son looked over him and pointed to her yellow eyes. I think I'll be like that with you too. Unless those people can truly look me in the eye. Mara did a quick note and they were crunching. I think only one ship will be enough. We're not going too far, and we'll be landing on Earth very quickly. So you want to Regina? Can you find the field you first landed in? The young woman died from her beds. I got coordinates memorized on Mara. It'll be a sense. Luke nodded before letting his gaze drift amongst everyone. Okay, are there any more concerns? He waited a few heartbeats before speaking again. All right. All we must do now is wait for Tenokan and Jason. You must have Taruka and Misiru. You two stay behind, please. The rest of you, I recommend some practice sessions. He turned and gave Mara a quick kiss on the lips. I'll see you later for practice sessions of our own, if you know what I mean. Mara smiled. I look forward to it. As everyone headed out, Taruka and Misiru approached the main stage. Luke jumped down from it and landed in front of them. Sensing a bit of anxiety coming from them, I belatedly realized how ominous he sounded. They probably feel like they've just been sent to the principal's office. I apologize for startling you. Haruka stuttered for a bit, feeling unusual and nervous. No, no, not at all. I did sense something through the force from you. Mishiro held her hand to her head as she felt a headache coming on. Erupted, it erupted. Haruka, this is Master Skywalker. A toad could feel the force from him. She looked down with bright eyes and smiled. What do you wish from us, Master? Luke breathed in and spoke, his eyes hardening. Both of you have come along quite a bit in these past few days, and I'm sure you'll come along even further in the next two. However, I sense your trial of fire is coming in this battle of chaos. Ruka clutched her vest and held it up. I'm not afraid of any test, Master Skywalker. I'm confident! The Jedi Master cut him off with a wave of his hand. You're confident, are you sure? You were confident going into the battle against Lumia, and ended up floating it back for three days. 
Hurricane's mouth counts sud as he remembered flowing in a ficus liquid. You are right. She grated through her clenched teeth. She finally felt a hand on her chin, tilting her head up. She looked and saw Luke there, staring at her with a piercing gaze. You are strong in the force, Tenno Haruka. I know that since the day I first met you. I also know of your overriding confidence in your own ability. You're much better at controlling that. But there's still work to be done. His eyes suddenly became glassy as if he was a trance. This battle against chaos shall be a great turning point for us all. Not even us men will be on chains. Monsieur looked down, uncertain as if he was all right. She reached out to him through the force and sent a mild probe to his mind. But she immediately hit a metal wall more powerful than any she had cowered. She stumbled back and felt dizziness, but she felt two strong hands broke her fall. Monsieur! Haruka yelled. The young, young woman blinked several times and saw Haruka and Luke standing there, holding her by her arms. Luke guided her to a stone bench where she sat down with a thud. I'm all right, she whispered. Haruka smirked. Right, that's why you were about to pass out. I understand. Luke looked at her and did a light mental probe. I apologize for kicking you out so violently. You see, wiped him off. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Luke chuckled a bit. It's all right. I do thank you for your concern. I must go. Please be ready when the time comes. Ruka looked up from his serious position, but Luke was already gone.